Hey guys, Alec Pierce, Tech Tip Scuba here at the tank store. <laughs> You'd think so, wouldn't you? No, no, these are not for sale, guys. These, in fact, are what are called a cascade system, cascade bottles. In a, in, in Chris is right back at Simcoe Diving with, with Chris, and these are the bottles from which he fills your tank. So here's your tank, there's the whip, we're all ready to fill your tank. Now, the compressor is right there. Can you see the compressor in there too? No? Okay, you've seen the compressor. Compressor sits here. We've got all these bottles. Now somebody asked a question. He said, Alec, why don't you just start the compressor, fill the damn tank, and send the guy on his way? What's with all this? Why do you have all the money and all the bottles and everything else? And you know, it's a good question. It's a good question. Because using a cascade system to fill a scuba tank doesn't make sense. It's not logical. But it works. Let me see if I can't give you some examples or maybe explain how it works. It's very simple. Your tank is empty. It's a 3,000 PSI tank. It's empty. Let's assume that I have one bottle that I have filled with my compressor to 3,000 PSI. Okay? Yours is empty. This has got 3,000. Now you want 3,000 in your tank. Simple, isn't it? Why don't I open this, open this, and I'll take the 3,000 here and put it into here. It won't work. Because the minute I open the valve, this starts to drop. It'll look like it's going to drop down to, shall we say, 2,500. And then they're even. So you now have a fill of 2,500. You don't want 2,500. You don't want 3,000. It won't work. So you say, well, start the compressor. Well, it's easier said than done. Number one, we don't want to run the compressor any more than necessary. The compressor is expensive. It's typically a 5 to 15 horsepower motor. We start the compressor, all the lights in this plaza go dim for a second. <laughs> Our meter starts to spin. They have to replace the dial every three weeks. <laughs> Costs a lot of money to run it. Secondly, the compressor requires a great deal of maintenance and it's based on hours of running. So, oil, filters, condensers, all of the parts of a compressor that make it safe for us to give air to you all wear out based on the amount of time it runs. We do not want to run the compressor if it isn't necessary. And that's the reason for a bottle system. So you might say, okay, well why don't you get a whole bunch of bottles, hook them all together, one big system, fill it with a compressor, run it for a few hours, fill them up, and then you can fill my tank and a whole bunch of other tanks. Well, it won't work either. Because once again, if the bottles that we are using are 3,000 PSI, and you come in with your tank, and I fill your tank, now all those bottles are down to 2,700. Nobody else can get a fill, unless I run the compressor. You starting to understand how it works? Now let me explain some of the new answers, some of the th little things. First of all, these big bottles up here, there's a bunch of them, a whole lot of them. These hold 420 cubic feet. Your tank is 80. These are at low pressure. They're only 2,400 PSI, but there's a lot of air in there. Look at them. A lot of air in there. Now, 2,400 PSI is not going to fill your tank, is it? No, no, no. So we have another whole bunch of bottles, all of these lower ones. Not those. Those are different gas. But all these ones in here, these smaller ones, these are at 4,000 PSI. Actually, I think they're 4,200, but let's say 4,000 PSI. Oh, well, that's good, because you only need 3,000. These are at 4,000. Okay. So you say, well, why don't you get rid of those big silly things and just have 4,000 PSI tanks? Well, it's the same thing. If you come in and your friend comes in and the local instructor comes in and there's 10 tanks and I fill them all from my 4,000 PSI bank and as soon as it drops to 3,000, I can't fill any more tanks. Okay, here's what happens. I run the compressor for two or three hours early in the morning when the air is cool. It's better for the compressor. Maybe the other stores in the area aren't open. Better for neighbor relations. The compressor's not quiet. And all the banks are filled. The big bank here, lots of air in there. All these big bottles filled, 2,400 PSI. And then all these smaller bottles are filled to 4,000 PSI. Everything's ready. Okay, I open the store at 10 o'clock in the morning. Noon for some dive stores that aren't serious. <laughs> and then you come. You come in, your buddy comes in, and that instructor comes in. You got a bunch of tanks to fill. So what do I do? Well, I hook your tanks up to my whips, and I start with this bank. Right, not with this bank, the high pressure, I start with the low pressure bank. 
and I open them up and I fill them all. 2,400 PSI. Now, you used to sort of say to me, now hold on, Alec, you fill all those tanks, <clears throat> those eight tanks, to 2,400 PSI from this big bank, it won't be 2,400 PSI anymore. Oh, you're right. It'll probably be 2,395. Because there's so much volume in here, it doesn't drop very much. I can take a lot of air, I can fill a lot of tanks to 2,400 PSI or close, and these don't drop very much. There's big volume, there's a lot of it. Okay, so, all right, it makes sense, and it's true. So we fill a whole 2,400 PSI. Now what do I do? You want 3,000. Well, it's easy. I shut these banks off, and I open this bank, and I top it up. I bring all those tanks up to 3,000 PSI. But what am I actually doing? I'm not starting with an empty scuba tank, am I? All those scuba tanks are now at 2,400. So I had to go from 2,400 to 3,000. I only had to put in 600 PSI of air out of this. And it's a fairly large bank, but it still drops. But I only have to go from 24 to 3,000. I only had to take 600 PSI, not 3,000. So these drop a little wee bit. So they drop from 4,000, they drop down to, oh, let's say they go down to 3,500. But all those tanks are filled. Off they go. Next guy comes in, he's got four tanks. Wants the same thing. Once again, I go to this big bank. I fill them all to 20, what do we say, 2395. So they're all filled to 24. I still have plenty of air in here. I can bring them up to 3000. Off he goes. Same thing. You fill them up to the low pressure from this great big volume, and you top them up with the high pressure. And I haven't run the compressor once. Now some dive stores, some big dive stores, will have three banks. That's right, three banks. We'll have a great big high volume. We had. I think at my last dive store, we had 15 of these. 15 of these high volume, because they're big volume is important at 2,400 PSI. And then we had another bank, I think it was 15 tanks again, I can't recall now, at 4,000 PSI. And then we had a smaller bank as well, about six or eight tanks again, at 4,500 or 4,600 PSI. So we filled the 24, and then we filled them up to 4,000, and then, no, 4,000, brought them up almost to 3,000, and if one of those large banks dropped below 3,000, we still had the other small bank. So we never ran the compressor through the day. We had large, lots of air, and by filling the, the tank with the 24 first, and just having to top it up, these, bank, these uh, tanks last a long time. Does that make sense? Once again, if you have a big tank at 3,000, and you want 3,000, I take out of here and fill your tank, neither tank will have 3,000. But if I fill your tank to 2,400 first, now I just have to bring your tank up 600 PSI, which is easy to do. Hope that makes sense. Sit down with a piece of paper and try to figure it out. Between you and I, some of my staff, I have spent a lot of time <laughs> trying to explain how a cascade system works. Hopefully that helps for you and answers some of your questions. Next time you're in the dive store, by the way, Take a look at, your, at the guy's uh, cascade bottle system and uh, maybe get him to explain it to you as well. But you'll at least have a basic understanding. Hope that helps, guys, answer some of your questions. Alec Pierce Tech Tips. Talk to you again soon.